Oh, redfish, 12 o'clock, big one too. Redfish, 12 o'clock. Made it. Yes. Good home, baby. Nice. <laughs> that was pretty right there. Yes, sir. That was beautiful, man. Nice work. That was awesome. What is going on, everybody out there? Hey, glad everybody joined in to the uh, Addictive Fishing uh, AF Live special Christmas uh, <laughs> broadcast. That's it. You gotta love live. Hey, uh, got a special guest with us today. Y'all been asking for him to come on, so there he is. How about that? It's Mr. Producer Man. How about that, guys? We got a new camera, so now we got two cameras. Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope everybody's out there having a great time. And you're doing your Christmas shopping, right? Oh, yeah. As you can see from the last AF Live, it is definitely coming together here in the studio. <laughs> We've got uh, Bob Brown's mounts up behind us. Always a good-looking mounted fish. And uh, my prize right up over that shoulder. That's my deer head that I... Uh, that's the one I... Oh, yeah, that's the big one. But uh, <laughs> anyway, everybody's always asking, what do you want, uh, or should I say, what can we get our better half, our person that we really like, what can we get them to stuff under the Christmas tree? And if you want to be the king daddy and be a real good dude. Um, that's a good one to start with, that's, right? That's a real good one to start with right there. I mean, we're going to talk a little bit about mega imaging from Humminbird for a little bit. This is the Solix 12. Awesome unit. I got the uh, 10 in mine. And the mega imaging, you're going to see some pictures we threw up earlier. We were out just the other day. Oh, there you go. There's one up there. Is it up now? Okay. It's up now. Um, we went up the, out the other day catching bait and just shooting. You know, we went out fishing. And uh, the marker that I normally go up to and catch bait uh, at, we put the side imaging on. And Irma had knocked the tower down. We didn't know where the tower was laying next to the uh, structure. So we come up to it, and sure enough, we now know where the tower is, and that's usually where the bait was hanging. So we're not throwing on that side of the tower anymore. I have um, never seen mega imaging, and I was so impressed with the clarity. When you took me out to the Skyway, you could see each rock. Oh, yeah, you can see. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, the, uh, the, the mega imaging. What can I say? Compared to um, what's out there you know, in the competitor markets out there, you cannot believe what this shows. I came across, the first time I was using it, I came across, we went through the Skyway, and I saw a little peak sitting up, and there was fish around it, and I zoomed in on it. And it wasn't that big a tarpon, but you could actually tell that it was a tarpon just by the shape and the way the look of the fish. And I, I saw some stuff from down in the Keys at the Miami Boat Show where you could actually see the lateral line on the snook that were laying underneath the boat. It was pretty cool. But uh, a lot of stuff out there. We'll be taking questions throughout the night. We're going to do this for 45 minutes. We've got to shut it off at... What time? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around 45 minutes, and uh, so we got plenty of plenty of time to do some question and answer. And uh, shoot, who's up first? <clears throat> All right, stock and stuff. Oh, one cool thing we got going on out there these days, and I can hold it up to that one right there. I think. Go down a little bit. If y'all see that, that is a new scent from Procure. It has baby or, trout. It's a baby trout. I cannot say it's a little lag there, but uh, it's baby trout. It's a scent that I've that I asked Procure to come up with and do because I'm, if you've ever had a trout on, you know, a baby trout, say eight, ten, twelve inches, a lot of times those fish will come up and eat a mirror lure, and you'll be sitting there fighting, 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 and this another big trout will come up and actually eat the trout. I've lost a trout, and I'll I'll just say it was rear, it was near twenty pounds. It came up and ate a three pound trout next to the boat and I flipped my bail and hope you know I hope for the best but when I set the hook he was gone but so many times I've had baby trout on and other giant trout will come up and eat it so Procure came out with that scent right there it's called baby trout and uh, should smell like baby trout and it's gonna attract some big fish hopefully so that's another great stock stocking stuffer I noticed something a little different with that box did you guys notice when he showed that box that's the Mogan series now now talk about that. 
Well, the Muggin series is just a, it's a whole line basically that we're coming out with, with Procure, that uh, this is a, a baby trout. So I would, if I'm trout fishing for big trout, that's the one I'm gonna definitely throw on a, you know, uh, I'm gonna try to imitate a baby trout with a bait buster, or I'll throw on the TTM, I, I forgot the number off my head, but uh, Mirror Lure makes a baby trout hard bait that that goes on perfect. And uh, we also have, a tarpon scent. This is the uh, this is the super gel, and I guess with the tarpon you're going to have a mixture of menhaden and crab and just all sorts of the stuff that tarpon love to eat. Um, and then we're going to have a redfish scent and you know snook snook scent. So uh, and the snook scent will be say you know what do they feed them over here in Tampa Bay is nothing but greeny. So it's going to be a sardine type of a scent that uh, that you'll be able to put on for snook. Uh, and just basically, um, not actually like, cra it's not going to say, hey, it's crab. It's going to be, this is for snook. It's going to be for redfish. It's going to be for tarpon. So it's kind of, kind of simplifies things just a little bit for, at least for me anyway. That's great for stocking stuffer too. That's. Oh yeah. Just don't open it. Better <laughs> <laughs> if you really, if you, you could dump it in, uh, you know, instead of a lump of coal, you could put it in a lump of broke gear. <laughs> what about glasses? Uh, another thing you can put in the stocking are Costa Del Mar glasses. Costa Del Mar sunglasses. These are the brand new. <clears throat> and these are the sunrise lens right here. I've been using these now for, I picked them up at the, uh, at the DOA Riders Fest. And they look like they're very light in color. Uh, which they are, but they let in a lot of light, and they're also mirrored. When you put them on, you can't see your eyes through them, and they're, uh, you'd think you'd be squinting because they're light, but they're not. They, they really cut the glare out, and they're, it's just an all-around good lens for you know, any, any type of water that you're fishing in. What frames do you wear? What do you recommend for frames? Um, I just, oh God, I just, I just changed up, too. <laughs> I, went, I, I wore the... Um, I wore the Fathoms for years, and I think these might be the ones I went to. No, I cannot remember the ones I went to. You like more coverage on the side? Yeah, more coverage on the side is what I went to. If you see right in here, um, you got a lot more coverage. It blocks out the sun coming into the side, and uh, just a really, really good lens. Any time of the day, too. And like I say, any type of water. You got <clears throat> some other stocking, stocking stuffers over there. What else you got? Let's see, we got the new PT, which uh, if y'all have heard of this little lure right here, we did a demo on it down in the Everglades. Um, it's one of the easiest top water walk in the dog baits that's, uh, that's weedless that I've ever seen in my life. Mark, uh, Mark has been playing around with this thing for about 15 years, I think, but finally come out with it. Uh, guys down in Okeechobee are loving it. Uh, big snooker, you know, crashing on it, you know, tarping everything. Uh, and good old standby, you got the uh, DOA shrimp. Of course, you can throw those in, the, in a stocking or... Uh, popping like, cork right there. Yeah, popping cork or otherwise known as the deadly combo. And uh, y'all have heard me tell stories about this thing. I am not ashamed to throw that thing right there. It's, it's won me a lot of money in redfish tournaments over the years. And uh, just a, a real simple way to, to, to work an artificial bait, throw it out and you, you be a little kid again, like Mark says in his seminars. You throw it out and you watch the court go under. When you watch the court go under, you set the hook and you, you reel in a fish. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat deal. I know right now in the winter time, trout is really big. And I know mirror lures, mirror deans especially, mm -hmm. you've got one there right in front of you. Show them the mirror dean. I think it's great for trout fishing in the winter. The mirror dean, and this one here is the Muggin series. You see that, uh, you see the little orange sticker on there, you'll see it at Dick's, it'll say Mogan Series on it. And uh, I like those, but they have the trocar hooks on them, which are really, really sharp. So when you get that trout that comes up and it feels like a butterfly on the end and you go to set the hook and you, you know, a lot of times they'll miss that treble hook, um, that trocar hook hardly ever misses and brrr, you got your trout on. It's really, really good bait. So I see PT on the flats for Pierce to Jensen. What color is PT? I see that there is... Somebody asking right there. Uh, the, what I like to do normally, uh, you know, with, with any bait that I'm out there using, if I'm using mirror lure or if I'm using DOA, I like to look down and see what kind of bait's out there at the time. If it's, if it's you know, in the colors, you know, that's, that's more of a natural color right there. And producer man. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's more the natural color. That's like the Arkansas shad color. That's a color that I absolutely love because that's the color of a mullet that hadn't been in tannic water. It's been in nice clear water. It's just a all round good bait. But you know, they, they have so many different colors just like the shrimp right here. Um, the reason they have the different colors is because throughout the year, the water will change color with the tannic acid, especially down here in Florida where you get near some of these freshwater creeks that come out, really stains the water up, and it'll stain the fish up just like you do an Easter egg. Uh, so that's why a lot of times you'll see different color baits and you'll see me throw different bait busters because I'm basically trying to match the hatch out there or imitate the bait that's in the water. Ken Taylor, imitate the bait. You watching? <laughs> that was his dealio, so. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get a question going on here. Uh, what's the best freshwater bat bait for bass? Right now, that one right there, the PT has been doing really good. We just covered that one right there. The guys down in Okeechobee are throwing this in the grass, and they are waylaying the bass because it's a good topwater plug, and it makes a lot of noise, and it's weedless. So try that one in, uh, in your freshwater ponds. And, and that like doesn't get caught up, and I, I noticed you guys were throwing it up in mangroves, and, and it's... Oh, yeah, you can skip it up in the mangroves, and when you pull it back through, you don't want to yank it back through the mangroves. Just kind of, you know, just wiggle it through, because, you know, that hook and everything wiggles back through the branches, just like you threw it in there, and uh, a lot of times you don't get stuck. Oh, carries on. Yeah, I see that. You just said you got the Corbinas. Corbina no frames from Costa. Oh, the Corbinas. That's the ones I'm using. <laughs> oh, guys, and I just had another bucket list fish that I just put on my bucket list. I just told Kevin about it, but it's an Opa. How many people know what an Opa is? Nice. And, wh and where do you catch it? In the water. In the water, right in the mouth. <laughs> and if they're not eating you, spear them with a gun. That's where they harpoon them. At least I heard that in. What's the best bait? Uh, let's see, what bait do you like to use the most? Pinfish or pilchards? Uh, over on the west coast, Tampa Bay, no doubt uh, pilchards. East coast, uh, pinfish. Simple, that one. That is simple. Why? Because the, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you why, is because the pilchard is the most prolific bait over here and over on the east coast, one of your most prolific baits over there are pinfish around all the uh, structure and whatnot. You don't get that many of the uh, scaled sardines and the thread fins. I mean, you get thousands of them over there, but um, for the most part, they're moving up and down the coast and migrating so fast that uh, the, the mainstay bait over there is a lot of times is a pinfish. <clears throat> is there an eight foot flats blue model bait caster? Uh, no, there's not. The only one that we have is a seven nine and we'll talk about a couple other things here first and then we'll talk about the rods. <laughs> um, a lot of good lose, I mean news out there going on. <laughs> but uh, let's see, what else can we do? Mirror lure, we covered that one. Seaguar, uh, man, I'm telling you, if you have not tried the Smackdown yet, I've been using it for about three years now. Unbelievable. I mean, you, you can cast, and everybody that I've ever talked to that I've, that I've had try this, they say, Blair, you're absolutely right. I got 20 more feet in my cast. It seemed like 30, and you cannot feel that line going through the eyes of your rods when, it, when you're casting it. It's unbelievable stuff. Um, it's a little bit more than your other braids out there, but uh, well worth it. And one thing you can also do, instead of, you know, spooling up new every time, if you have two different spools, you can take the you know, take the line off of one reel and put it on the other reel and use the back half of the line that you've never used. So you're saving money that way. But uh, yeah, I know it's a little bit expensive, but I absolutely love the stuff. And I literally can count the number of wind knots I've had on one hand using the stuff. Those are great stocking stuffers. I know I'm a big stocking <coughs> stuffer. I know when we do Christmas, we open the presents under the tree first, but there's always the stocking and I, I think all these the lures the doas the mirror lures even the cigar all fit so if you're shopping for one of your family members uh, you can get any of these things and you can put it in a stocking <clears throat> so let's move on to under the tree which is a little bit bigger and it's starbright's got some new stuff oh right yeah here. starbright's got a bunch of new stuff just want to give a shout out mary ann adams how are you she's nine years old <laughs> but uh yeah, and, and if you have that teenager out there that you want to go polish your boat for your dads or moms out there Starbright's got some stuff that makes it a whole lot easier right now. The Extreme Line Series, um, I, I can't, I've told people, you know, whatever it says it does right there on the label, it does it, and it does it exactly the way it says. Um, 
No son about Starbright, man. I mean, between this and Startron and, you know, everything that they make. And I'm telling you, they have a catalog that's this thick, and you would not believe some of the stuff that you can get from Starbright. So go check them out. Go to their website. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can find a stock and stuff there. They have everything from grilled brushes to toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, they had, uh, what was it, uh, like uh, tie-downs, and they had bungee cords? Oh, yeah, tie-downs, bungee and... cords, lights. They got spider-away spray. You, I mean thousands of products that you can get from Starbright. So I highly recommend just go there and take a gander through their, uh, through their website and they get in their catalogs, just thousands and thousands of products. And up next, I know you got something new, your new cast net. Oh Guys, yeah. We got a new cast net. Blair's got, and it's, and it's looks like a flag. We don't have it here tonight, <clears throat> but talk about the cast net. Something yeah, I, I'm, my bad. I should have brought, I got the, uh, what I'm calling the Patriot net. It's a red, white, and blue cast net that, uh, that they made me over at Barracuda Nets, and I tell you what, it, it is, it's the most beautiful net I've ever seen. I don't even want to throw the thing, really, but I'll get two made. We'll hang one right <laughs> up back here so you can see it. But uh, you know, definitely the prettiest net I've ever had in my life, and you know, it catches bait like no other net out there. Um, they got a guarantee on a cast net. You've never heard of a guarantee on a cast net, but go check them out, Barracuda Cast Nets. Um, definitely one of my one of my favorite new sponsors that we got, and. What you, what you got? Second one right there, first one. I can't see you. Just tell Jim hello. Tell Jim hello. Okay. Hey, Jim, what's happening? Saying <laughs> hey to my father-in-law out there in California. <laughs> uh, I see you using a different reel than the Sabalos in some of your videos. Are those going to be a new model? Uh, we'll talk about that about 844, because we're going to be off at 845. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give you a little hint what's going on. But big news here coming out next year. Really, really good news. I mean, y'all are going to love this. I'm, I'll guarantee it. <laughs> um, let's see. How do I get a bit lightning with a 250 under the tree? <laughs> the issue is left channel on if you have mono sound on That's a tablet a, or phone. You a beaver tail phone. lightning with a 250. Thank you. Uh, Thank oh, you, Dirty that's, Dirty. I took for a ride with it. I, we did the uh, wet test yeah. and did the uh, ride in the Lightning 74 miles oh. an hour in that boat. Unbelievable boat. I know that's going to be the boat he wants next, that yeah. Beaver Tail Lightning. It does 70-something? Well, uh, with a 250. Wow. With a 250 on the back. Unbelievable Whew. boat. But uh, if I was still doing redfish tournaments, yeah, that's definitely the boat I would have. Um, travel a long distance and get to where nobody else can get quickly. Uh, this voice is calm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you guys, is, can you hear Blair and you can't hear me? Those of you who are listening to mono audio on your tablets, it's the first time we've gone through our camera, so maybe a little audio difficulty. <clears throat> what am I? Audio on phone is fine. Thank you, Carrie. Audio on computers is fine, but it's those tablets. What's the best place during the winter months to locate flounder in the Tampa Bay area? Uh, last year, I was finding them in the channel about I w anywhere from buoy 7 out to 1. And even the uh, whistle buoy had them out there just on the bottom, uh, bouncing jigs. I, I wasn't using bait. I was using the DOA. Uh, I was using the shrimp with a jig head in it. And I was also using the uh, DOA cows, the uh, flute tails basically cutting them in half just bouncing them and there was a lot of flounder out there and you know nice three spot flounder summer flounder they were all good uh everything on the laptop's good let's see come over to the social and pull some big yellow oh i dude i want to come to who was that one mr 05 sti uh yeah i would love to come pull on some big yellow and blue fin tuna <laughs> um to social. Where's social? What's he saying? Oh, Southern Cal. Actually, I'm going to be in Southern California tomorrow night. Let's go. Yeah, this is our last gig. This for is the, the last gig for the year right here. I'm, I'm heading out to California tomorrow and uh, would love to. Shoot me an email. <laughs> I need some bluefin. I want to make some pokey. I did that last time I was out there. It was good stuff. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite color DOA shrimp from Cliff Casey? Uh, Cliff, I like the natural colors. Um, if I'm, you know, anytime I'm in the winter, I'll, I'll throw, you know, some chartreuse on it just because it'll, you know, I think they see it a little bit better. But uh, just a natural shrimp color and, you know, always put some Procure on it. Uh, it get, just gives it that shrimp 
that shrimp smell. A lot of times I'll use a crab also uh, instead of a shrimp smell because the crab has a little more iodine flavor, a little more iodine scent to it. So, um, yeah, that's my shrimp, the, the, the original one he came out with, the original color. <clears throat> All right, we can get back. Let's go back. All right. For you guys, I think a great... Uh, present that you can get somebody is to hire a charter. Obviously support the guide industry and we love the Space Coast where Blair's from and don't you think that's a good idea for for a, uh, a <clears throat> gift? Yeah, definitely. And you know, the guys on the Space Coast, they can use the charters too and uh, you know, go to the Space Coast and visit. But one thing I did want to touch on a little bit here too, if y'all do book any guides or go fishing down in the Keys with guides, they, they they need some business down there because they are starving. They you know there's some hotels that are open, but you know if you can find a place to to lay your head, you're going out fishing, right? You're going to be out on the water all day. You don't really care where you lay your head. At least I don't when I get back in from fishing. But uh, see if you can book that guy down in the Keys that you have been a, that you haven't been able to book in the past few years because he's just been too busy. Uh, pretty much he's he's open right now. So, and that's because of Irma. Cajun Thunder popping court. No, nope. Deadly Conwo popping court. <laughs> you ever when you're when you're doing Christmas? Another thing that when I do Christmas is and you and you get those boxes that look like clothes. Yeah. You know, you're like, next. We know that's not fish in there, but there's some good clothes now. Right? We oh, got yeah. some good clothes. You're wearing some good clothes, and I know you got a new sponsor for your feet. Oh yeah, we'll talk about my feet in a minute. But uh, <laughs> you know. I, anybody that's seen me out lately, these are basically all the shirts that I'm wearing. Dix has these. They're, they have a thumb hole in them also. So, you know, you, sometimes you see me out there wearing this out there, so I don't get the sun on the back of my on the back of my hands. But uh, it's all SPF, um, and they're very comfortable. They're the God. They're what I'm wearing now. So I used to wear all cotton. I'm not sure. I think these are polyester, but um, they're very comfortable. They they wick away the sweat, and when you do sweat. It evaporates off you so fast it'll give you chills. I mean, it, uh, it's literally like wearing, wearing nothing. As close to it as possible. And my feet. Talk Guess we're gonna talk feet. about my feet. Let me show you a pair. Well, while these are, these are all beat up, might have some chicken something on the bottom of it, but um, I have found a pair of shoes that I absolutely love and I've been, we've been hounding them for I don't know how long, you know, to to make sure we get them as a sponsor, but it's soft science shoes. And um, I have actually delayed my knee surgery here for the past six months after I put these shoes on at ICAST. I walked around for three days and you know was still able to go out at night. I didn't have the swelling on my knees. It was awesome, that, you know, you're gonna see me in shoes. And I always said, if somebody can get me in a pair of shoes on the boat, you know, they gotta be good shoes because you know I've been barefoot for the past, couple of years on the show <laughs> uh, it's been a been a couple but uh yeah if you and anybody that's ever tried these on I've, I've you know if you don't mind if you don't mind me when you see me if you if i got if i got them on i'll let you try them on but they are absolutely incredible shoes they are um i mean you did how many days at icast we were at icast we put yes. the shoes on and three solid days on my feet and i must have sat down that never happened yeah 10 or 15 times the whole time yeah. So and that was it. The shoes are coming out with the thin 3.0, and they really look cool. So get you some for Christmas for and sure. Very comfortable, and they do the watershed too. I mean, you, you, you know, you can get them wet, and they just the water sheds right off of them. <clears throat> Ever get a hook in a foot? Yeah, I have, Josh, real bad. Um, True oof. story. Somebody saw you at ICAST there with the shoes. What's that? Brian Taylor. Oh, true story. Blair never switched shoes and came to my booth. <laughs> I guess he was blown away. So yeah, but even before they were sponsors, I was sitting there talking about them, and uh, you know, even even if they weren't, I'd still talk about them because they're still they're at, they're that good of a shoe. Uh, would you ever consider a trip to Puerto Vallarta? Vallarta. Oh yes, I, I, I consider a trip anywhere. DOA Definitely. shrimp or some other bait? What, are you kidding me? We've been using DOA shrimp. Blair, how long have you thrown a DOA shrimp? Uh, that Mark, I think he had been out a year and I, I found his shrimp. And I, the, the original one had two hooks that came out of the top of it, and I think I still got one. But, uh, yeah, I've been throwing Mark shrimp forever and ever and ever. You know, and it, if it works, why, you know. Yep. 
If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <clears throat> Went to the D Tower for Mangrove Snapper. Well, that's Blair's favorite. My favorite fish to eat. Come back to Lower Laguna Madre. Caesar will definitely be back down there. We um, we just had to cancel a trip. We were going to be down there in December, but we're gonna we're gonna come back down in the spring and hopefully catch a good snook bite in South Texas and uh, do a lot of good redfish and trout and black drum and all that good stuff y'all got down there. So did you hear about the trip to uh, Texas for DOA? Oh yeah, they got snowed on, so it's good. Thing. He didn't go. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and I tell you, South Texas around Corpus Christi is a lot like uh, we're on the same latitude basically here in Tampa. So when it is cold in Corpus Christi, it's like Florida cold, man. It, 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 you can't put it on enough layers. You got to wear a rubber suit for sure. What rig should I use for mahi? Let's see. There was a good one right there. That DOA shrimp, believe it or not. Um, I mean, when you look in the mahi's belly after you've been out there catching them, uh, I've always seen shrimp or little tiny crabs in the mahi belly. So, and I've and I've thrown that at them, and they go to it in a heartbeat most of the time. And I use the natural color one out there. So that's, you know, I always anytime I see a dolphin, I'll throw a DOA shrimp at them. What's a good affordable inshore spinning reel? Britt Robertson is asking. A good inshore spinning reel. The Blair Wiggins spinning reel. Oh, wait, that's, I'm not supposed to say that. I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, yet. okay. Well, get yourself. Actually, a... no, we can talk about reels. Uh, yeah, I we guess we can. We talk can talk about reels. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I know Lou's makes a good reel out there. They make a really good reel. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Um, you guys have supported us for 10 years with the Flats Blue Rods, and it has come to an end. As you guys have gone to Dick Sporting Goods, they're not there anymore, uh, so they're sold out. So there'll be new rods coming next year. So that brings us to our last gift, which is a Dick Sporting Goods gift card. Because what better way to uh, get yourself, oh, let me get to it. Um, what better way to get a new fishing rod uh, come February when they come to the stores uh, and get Blair's new rods. And look, so, my fingernails are clean, Mom. <laughs> 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 so that's the Iggy on the rods. I know it's something that's kind of the uh, elephant in the room for us. Uh, but January 8th will be our next AF Live to tell you all about it. Yep, we will tell you everything that we can. It's just right now we can't. But if you do <laughs> like the blue rods, guys, if you, if you can find one, if you can get out and find one right now, you better find them. Uh, I know Wright McGill will still honor all the warranties and everything with the rods, so, and they're, they're great rods too, but, uh, you know, but, but, but. Yeah, just try online. Yeah. Um, I think possibly Dix um, has some combos online, but again, you're going to, they're going to be in minimal supply and uh, different uh, versions, 6.9, maybe 7.2s, seven 7.9s, seven maybe 8 footers, but there's not many left. So again, they're collector's items, so if you can get your hands on one. They're great rods. Still good rods. Still catch a lot of fish on them. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. Let's do another question here. What's the best area for you to fish, Space Coast or Tampa Bay area? Um, I would say the best area for me to fish right now would be Tampa Bay because it's a lot closer than, you know, driving that death trap of I-4 over to the East Coast. Speak, speaking of... Um, Thank God there was a there was a saving angel in my son's yes. car here last Thursday night or Thursday afternoon. Gave him my GMC 2500 and he decided to roll it down 528 two and a half times. But luckily he was wearing a seat belt and uh, saved his life. So wear your seat belts out there and drive safe. Don't need to lose anybody out there. I agree. But it was a scary scene that when I saw the pictures. But. Oh, need any field testers for that new rod? That's a very interesting question, Tarpon Hunter Fishing. Tarpon Hunter, yes. Um, uh... That's one thing that we're going to be doing next year is we're going to have our own pro staff. And I can't talk much about it. I can tell you just that. But again, we thanks for the inquiry to be a part of our pro staff. We would definitely want people to tackle tests. Not sure, Cliff, if we'll be out in Houston next year or not, but uh, just keep an eye out. You never know. We haven't set the schedule yet. Brian Taylor with Sea Mule. <laughs> <laughs> the guys out in uh, the guys out there in Texas, I believe they got it and absolutely love it. But I know uh, 
I know uh, who's it? Jason down in uh, what's that? Jason Arm. Yeah, Jason Arman down there in uh, Southern Indian River. He absolutely loves his. Talking about uh, my buddy makes this wading cart and it's got every bell and whistle on it. If you like the wade. All right, so Jose's got a two-parter. What is the best chip for fresh salt water? So I assume that's for your electronics and avionics. Uh, the best master. chip for fresh water that goes in the Humminbird units, units is the Lake Master chip. Uh, hands down, you can take and you can, you can, uh, the, what am I trying to do? The, Sensitivity? No, the con, the contour. It follows the <laughs> contour line. Sorry, I had a little brain going on. Still thinking about my son rolling that truck. But uh, the contours, you can set it to follow the contours. You can also do your lake mapping. You can, so much you can do with those Humminbird units. And, you know, like I said, if you want to be the kingpin and give away a nice Solix 12 with mega imaging and all that good stuff we're talking about, absolutely, hands down, the best unit I've ever seen imaging, side imaging, um, you name it. James Kingsbury, um, the rods, I think the new rods are even better looking than the old rods. That's just my opinion. What'd you say? He's asking about the uh, sexy blue on them. Will they still have that <clears throat> sexy blue color? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Tune in June 8th. Jason Armand's right there. Jason Armand. Sea Mule is awesome. What's going on, Jason? Uh, we'll go to color for soft lure when fishing sea trout. Um, I love the... Uh, God, the the Arkansas is called the Arkansas Shad. Uh, and if I'm in a little bit of water that's got a green color to it, I like throwing the electric chicken. Uh, and, I, and I like using a 16th ounce jig head just because you can rip it through the water. You can feel that little DOA tail, that cow brrr, wiggle a little bit and stop it. And it, uh, it almost suspends for, for a second because it is so light. And as soon as you go back to jig it again, a lot of times that's when you're going to find you got the fish on. We'll be able to show everybody that here in your tackle den here next yep. season. Yep. Got the, uh, yeah, the, got the aquarium almost going over there. It's almost done yet, but we're you'll not see, done. You'll see what I'm talking about with the way those uh, baits rip through the water and, you know, be nice. Uh, let's have a little custom. How's fishing Venice, Louisiana in February? Uh, if you can <laughs> The duck hunters are basically done, so you're, you're good to go. And from what I remember being out there in February, it's cold. So, you know, pack a, wear rubber because, you know, a little rubber suit uh, and wear layers. But the fishing's awesome, absolutely awesome. The, uh, the yellowfin tuna come in pretty close, and the red fishing is always off the chart as well as the trout. Drew Tomlin's got a question there for you at the bottom. Would you recommend a bass boat for inshore fishing? Uh, no, I really wouldn't because if you take a bass boat on the flats, bass boats tend to sag down in the back. You draft a lot more and you're going to be tearing up the bottom a lot of times. Even with a jack plate, uh, you'll find that you know a bass boat's really not made to, to be on the flats. Flats boats are made to be on the flats. So that's why I always, you know, if, when I see a bass boat on the flats, I'm like, oh, God, you know. And he also asked about offshore, and I wouldn't recommend that either. I'd get me a Skeeter Bay boat, 23-footer, 24-footer, and go yeah. offshore with it. Yeah, bass boats are made for bass fishing. And, you know, they're, they're, the wiring inside of a bass boat is made for freshwater. You'll hear that from any mechanic out there. Uh, yeah, do a saltwater boat for saltwater. What is the best bait for tarpon? That's Danny Mancino. Mancino. Danny Mancino, best bait for tarpon is the one they're eating at the time. And I don't mean to be a smart aleck about it, but they could be keyed in on uh, blue crabs at one, you know, certain different hours of the day because you're going to, the tide will flush out blue crabs first and then maybe pass crabs will come out. And if you're fishing with a blue crab, when the pass crabs are out, they're not going to key in on blues, they'll be on pass crabs. So um, basically, and if there's menhaden in the area, I'd throw menhaden. If there's big threadfin shad, Throw a big threadfin shad, but uh, once again, imitate the bait that's out there, and a lot of times you'll find that that's what you're going to find your, all your fish on. Show them that new tarpon scent. That's a good thing to have in your tackle box. Tarpon scent right there. If y'all just joined in, uh, we have teamed up with Procure, and they've teamed up with us. We've got a new Mogan series out there that um, this is the tarpon scent. We got a, a, a baby trout scent, which basically is, uh, I told the story on that earlier if y'all saw that. But anytime you find a little trout, what happens? You get a big trout come up underneath it. So a uh, whole new line of scents there is the Mogan Series scents that we come out with, with Procure. They'll be out next year. Actually, they're out now, right? 
There'll be a Dick Sporting Goods soon. It's yep. uh, snook, redfish, trout, tarpon, and then the new scent, Blair scent, baby trout. Baby trout. Love, because, I mean, everybody knows trout's my favorite thing to, to catch. So. One of my favorite fish. Like I said, I just put a new Opa on. I didn't see anybody come up and <laughs> comment on my Opa, my new bucket list fish. But, I mean, if you don't have any of those baits for tarpon fishing, if you get a scent, whatever bait you have, at least spray some of that on there, at least get your hands, you know, the oil from your hand that's sent off of it, yeah. and it'll give you at least a better shot of what bait you have with you uh, to catch tarpon. And Elite Lightning there, what's the best bait for saltwater? I, you know, I, he, I think Kevin touched on it earlier, that 24 Skeeter, I absolutely love that boat. I've, I've had it out 50 miles on a nice day. Uh, made sure the weather was going to be right to go out and back and, you know, had another boat out with, there with us too. So um, I'm very safe in that boat. And also I did the, oh, well, I didn't do it. My cousin did it the other day, left the plug out of the boat, filled up full of water, and you cannot sink a Skeeter boat. Just found that one out too. <laughs> James, you're talking about a bait caster I see there. Um, let me tell you something. The new rod line we're coming out with, the rod and bait caster reel of this new product. Uh, if you are a Florida Gator fan, I tell you what, you will have to have this outfit, I promise no you. No doubt. <laughs> no. What's the best motor, Ethan B47? Uh, Ethan, the, all the motors out there these days, you get into the high compression, you know, like the HPDIs or the, you know, how much do you want to spend? I mean, they, <laughs> you know, um, Yamaha's uh, uh, one of the best motors out there on the market. Another good mo motor out there is Suzuki. Uh, and, well, who we got else out there? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of new things coming next year. Yeah, but, a lot uh, of stuff happening. What about us dog fans? I'm sure they got a red reel out there. Yeah, Just have do. to break out the black spray paint for the <laughs> Georgia Bulldog color. <laughs> Somebody spamming Brady. Come on, Brady, son. come on, dude. What are you doing? We got somebody quicker than you out there. <laughs> uh, Gary, I caught a striper earlier in the month on an eight-ounce Mogan spoon tip with a sluggo in Connecticut. CT, that's Connecticut, ain't it? Yes, it is. Wow, cool beans. Good to know the Mogan Spoon is uh, working up there, too. I saw, uh, let's see, just, just to answer Tom Windrum, if you're watching tonight, I, I got your email, and I sent it to Blair. Oh, I already Blair emailed has a, a photo when he was fishing with C.A. Richardson, catching redfish on the Mogan Spoon. So I bet that was fun. <laughs> Do I like to fish at night? Yes, I love to. F I love to fish at night in the daytime, in the morning, in the afternoon. It, I, it doesn't matter when I'm fishing. I fish in my sleep, so yeah, I love to fish. <laughs> at we night. just can't film at night because the lights. We were talking about it though. Producer man is right audio only. Yeah, I know. There it's, were one's right and one left. I got to figure that out for the next for January eighth. We'll figure this audio issue out. Thank you, Kerry. Ethan, a good spoon for snapper is a, they call them diamond jigs, almost like a little flutter jig. I use those for, uh, well, I guess you'd be talking mangrove snapper. Uh, if it's red snapper, it's, you know, you can put anything down there and a red snapper is going to eat it. There's, you know, like Josh. a unicorn, they're never out there anywhere. What's that? Josh, Josh. there's got a question about to the get a lot of line twists and you use a mug and spoon on a spinning rod. How do you prevent that? Um, I guess you're still using mono uh, since you're getting line twist. Um, I don't really notice it anymore. Slow the spoon down. Uh, a lot of times if you're working it too fast, it's going to spin. You can also put a swivel in the front of it too if you want to try to do a swivel. Uh, it kind of take away a little bit of the action. But um, try tying a loop knot instead of, instead of tying directly to the spoon. But tie a loop knot and that will keep it fluttering as well instead of spinning. Inshore Slam, send us an email at Blair at AddictiveFishing.com. Uh, if you got some lights, we've checked out quite a few and uh, would love to shoot a night snook show. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Blair Wiggins <clears throat> Project or Blair Witch Project, whatever. The Blair Snook Project. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while back, you know. That, that's that's a, Ken Taylor that, wants us to do that. That's for, an old movie now. <laughs> An old movie. Let's see. 39. We got about 
five more minutes, folks, and we got to shut it off. And uh, look, Travis Royal calling me. Travis, what a, he wants us to fish in Destin yeah. for the Cobia, probably, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, let's see, James, do you prefer fishing at night for snook? I like to skip docks at night. I love fishing at night for snook, like I said, but, you know, what's cool is when, it, when people tell you snook feed at night only, and I love to catch them in the daytime, especially those big slobs underneath the, uh, the 10 cent bridge down there in Stewart, around the Roosevelt and the inlet, you know, in the daytime, you can get those big slobs, and, uh, they look a lot prettier in the daytime than they do at night, too, so... Gary would like to use DOA products up in Connecticut. What would you recommend? Um, basically, go on DOA's website and, and look at the baits that they have and imitate the bait that you have up there. They make a, uh, they make a, you know, a, a bunch of different lures out there that look like, um, let's see, the bait buster kind of would look like a finger mullet or a shad or... Swimming mullet? You know, swimming mullet. There's, just go on there. I'd say match whatever type bait you have up there. If you have a pinfish, they got a, a bait called a tough guy. It looks just like a pinfish. So um, try that. Any of the fluke tail stuff, they got a whole line of freshwater stuff now that uh, that works and has been working all over the country now. I know Mark's doing a lot of those <laughs> a lot of those traveling deals now. But uh, yeah, the freshwater is is taking off for them. It's good too. So tell us more about your warm blooded opal you caught. I didn't catch one, Jason. I am wanting to catch one. I had one in a restaurant last time I was out in Southern California and uh, absolutely delicious and I did a little research on it. It looked like a, what I tell you, it looked like a clown, a permit dressed up in a clown suit on the West Coast. So it, uh, they're beautiful fish that are the only warm-blooded fish out there, I guess, that, uh, that they know about and they are delicious. There's four different types of meat you get off the fish. Ooh, nice. So, and it's neat. What's the best size rod and reel to use for saltwater fishing? Sky choice. Um, I like any, anything in between a seven foot and a seven nine uh, for just an all round good rod. Uh, there'll be three choices in that line coming up between seven and eight foot. So there'll be three to choose from. Uh, and a lot more actions too, guys. So you're gonna, I mean, everybody been asking for more actions, more actions, and more actions. And now we're with somebody that can give us more actions. <laughs> More actions and cool rods. And gotta love it. But, uh, All right, you're ready to wrap Justin it up. Richburg, you can't fish. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate that one, brother. <laughs> no, I can't fish, but I can catch. I got proof. I got video. Uh, have I gone to Central California not to fish? <laughs> oh, she's uh, delayed, huh? Yeah, she's laughing. She's laughing. <laughs> All right, guys. Again, we uh, really appreciate you guys tuning into these live shows. Everybody has been real positive about it. Uh, the next one's going to be January 8th, literally when Blair gets back from California <coughs> on the 4th. We're going to get him in here, and we're going to show you off uh, something that we are pretty proud of. Yep, definitely, and, guys. Uh, so, again, Merry Christmas to you guys. And go ahead. You can say I'll put you on so you guys. <clears throat> All right. Well, Merry Christmas, guys. Thanks for tuning in for the past 18 years. Unbelievable. And uh, don't forget about the stocking stuffers from our guys that absolutely make the best products for saltwater fishing out there. DOA, or let me go, mirror lure stuff, DOA stuff, Procure, I mean, Seaguar, don't forget about, you know, all of our sponsors. I think we got the best sponsors that make the best products for fishing that we do. Um, and I guess with the fish that we catch kind of proves it a little bit. But uh, thanks to the guides and everybody out there that helped me put me on fish this year. And uh, looking forward to do it again next year. Oh, and one last thing. All the products that you saw today on the show, from the hummingbird to the mirror lure to all that stuff, you can win when you fish with him. So go to our website, addictivefishing.com slash fish with Mogan man and sign up to win a fishing trip with him and you get $5,000 with all the prizes we just showed you guys with the products you get in that prize as well so yeah, who is that one on there that said I can't fish let's go fish brother <laughs> come on <laughs> challenge you <laughs> all right guys thanks for tuning in once again and we'll see you all next year adios